In this video trailer, we're gonna look at five consumer staple stocks. Stay tuned. Hey traders, warm welcome to you. So consumer staples often are the foundation of a long-term buy and hold investors portfolio. Consumer staples, something that the consumer, the end user, just consumes regularly, whether we're talking about edible, whether we're talking about drinking, whether we're talking about using a cleaning product, a personal hygiene product, something that when someone affin has affinity with the brand, then the assumption is they're gonna keep using that brand. And these guys' big job is to get people to use the brand and be in love with the brand and not look anywhere else because it's high competition, all these things, they're not the, you know, there's no like um, barrier to entry. They have nothing really but a good brand, maybe a little bit of a secret recipe for the taste or whatever it may be, but they rely on people continually using them. So with that being said, we are creatures of habit. Once we start using something, we get on board with it. We kind of tend to feel that we should just carry on doing that unless something shifts us dramatically. It might be a financial uh, reason. It might be something else. So five stocks here that uh, regardless of when you're watching this video, whether you're watching it in 2018 or whether you're watching it in 2025, are probably going to be around and are probably going to still be producing quality goods um, that people consume. First one, no particular order. Pep, PepsiCo. We've all heard of Pepsi. They're in the drink space. Uh, they're also going into the snacks area. They produce a good yield. Something to be said with all of these, and we'll probably touch on this at some point throughout the video, is the, tra the, tra the, uh, the changing shift in people's perception of a product. Now we know that sugary drinks like Coke are at the moment I like Coke and Pepsi. That won't, that won't please the, the PR guys at Pepsi, will it? My uh, immediate reaction to say Coke. But you get the idea the sugary drinks at the moment aren't really getting much traction. So they're pushing on the, the max side of stuff, the diet side of things, the low sugar, no sugar, zero sugar, all this kind of stuff. So if they start to produce drinks that are more in line with people, with the trend of people, yes, people are still going to consume Pepsi. But these other drinks that come out, it's their ability to innovate, it's their ability to keep producing stuff that aligns with consumer trends that will make them money. There's a good yield, that one at the moment in time, and they're coming to the snack area as well. So something to be careful of with the health issue, but if they diversify, um, they sh they've got a strong brand to ride any storm out. Okay, number two, Hershey Company. So Hershey's is a good old chocolate uh, undervalued as a point of this video in inverted commas. And what I mean by that is the PE ratio, average PE ratio, as we've pushed up, the price at the moment is well below that average. So if you were a fundamental guy, that would be something that would uh, give you a kind of bullish take on it. But going back to chocolate, now, if we look at the health um, trend and people are moving away from sugar and all these things that are perceived to be unhealthy, is an argument to say that actually, you know what, People have always realized that chocolate's unhealthy. And when you compare it perhaps to other stuff, it's almost like it's, is it a healthy unhealthy? This is a kind of really ridiculous thing to say, but people think, okay, well, yes, there's sugar in that, yes, but it's not the same as perhaps eating a bag of sweets that are got artificial colors in, have artificial flavors in, and sugar. People say, okay, if I'm gonna treat myself with something I enjoy, then a bar of chocolate I know is I shouldn't be eating multiple amounts of this every day, but I can justify this. It's not so unhealthy as some things. And maybe people get that and it might weather the storm a little bit more. Uh, the charm of the chocolate manufacturers kind of reducing sugar and stuff. They've got to be very careful. They don't kill the flavor. I like any of these things, you know, if you, if you kind of reduce the stuff that's making it taste what it tastes like too much, it suddenly is not the same bar of chocolate or the same drink that you're used to. So there's that balancing out they've got. So that could, be something to stick in a portfolio if you're so inclined. Uh, Hershey Company, of course, we've got Cadbury uh, as well, similar chocolate in the UK. Uh, KMB, Kimberly Clark, this has got a decent dividend, uh, premium personal goods, so tissues, nappies, or diapers, as they say in the US. Uh, massive brands, a massive amount of brands, and these are a little bit more premium. So the argument, and the bearish argument for these would be okay. Uh, people are just going to buy own brand stuff. They're going to buy the cheapest uh, toilet paper. They're going to buy the cheapest diapers, nappies. They're going to buy the cheapest tissues they can uh, when times are bad. But the bullish argument is, well, they won't because they will save money elsewhere before they start 
buying stuff that's less quality, perceived less quality that you're using on their skin and this kind of thing. So the idea is for the Bulls perspective is that someone like Kimberly Clark is going to be uh, around for a while, it's going to do well regardless of the economy. So something to consider perhaps uh, for a portfolio. Procter & Gamble, again, huge amount of brands, US, UK, Europe wide. Again, cleaning, personal care, they're bringing out stuff all the time. Uh, they've got the firepower to bring out brands and market them aggressively and heavily. Um, do we have a little bit of a backlash between kind of using chemicals inside the home and stuff? Yes, we do, but they're not tied to specifically doing that. They can very, very easily pivot into some kind of natural green or greener kind of sp sprays, which I'm sure they do already. Uh, so they can shift very, very easily with the change in trends. They're just a solid brand. They've got a sol uh, solid company. They've got a, a massive a sea, ocean of solid, good brands that people in, uh, know, love and consume. And they're constantly acquiring more. They're building more, generating more. And they've got obviously the relationships with the retailers, wholesalers, etc., manufacturers to get a brand design, develop the best guys and the best guys and girls in the world to develop it, get it out there, get it on the shelves, get it marketed and get it into homes. Uh, they're probably the most one of the uh, well positioned out of anybody on here last one here Diageo uh, these guys have a big suite of drinks brands in Smirnoff Bailey's Guinness it goes on and on and the the large brand portfolio I've put here the argument on the bullish side of this is hey do you know what people are always consuming alcohol they'll always consume alcohol good times bad times uh, will they spend on premium stuff and go to own stuff potentially but Diageo, again, have the ability to pivot, create a, uh, you know, a lower brand or a kind of seemingly budget brand. Uh, it doesn't, so it doesn't damage their premium brands, but still generating revenue from it. So they're well positioned as well. A little, they tend to trade, uh, alcoholic companies tend to trade, alcohol companies tend to trade at a higher multiple as others, just purely because they tend to outperform. And so that premium is often in there if you look at the PE ratios. Anyway guys, stick any, you've got, I've missed out loads of courses, loads of consumer staples, just five that I've um, picked and thought they'd be interesting to discuss. What's your favorite one? Stick it in the comment section below, whether it's one that's up here or one that you've got in your own portfolio. Anyway guys, take care, whatever you're investing in or trading, bye-bye.